Hello, and welcome to 3D Vision Technologies, 10.4 Tech Talk, a monthly introduction to engineering technology that can make your company better, faster, and smarter. I'm Todd Majewski, your host for today. Today's topic is forget everything you know about surfacing. Our guest speaker is Randy Simmons, application engineer for 3D Vision Technologies. Randy works out of our Dayton, Ohio office and has been with 3D Vision for 13 years. Randy is also a certified elite application engineer with SolidWorks. Randy, welcome to the show. Hey, Tom. Great to be here. Hey, before we get started, I want to remind everyone that this show is being recorded and we will send an email with a link to go back to this presentation in its entirety. Also, we'll be answering questions at the end of this 30-minute presentation, so use that chat window in the lower right corner to type in your questions. You don't have to wait till the end to ask the question. So, Randy, before we get started, can you tell the audience what this pre presentation is about and why should they be listening? Yeah, so really this presentation is for anybody who does freeform designs or surfacing designs, uh, which I'll admit is one of the things that probably takes the longest amount of time to master in any traditional CAD package. Mm -hmm. So I know that we're going to be talking a little bit about what's called sub-D modeling, but that's not really a new technology, is it? Right. Uh, it, it's not really. It's been around for five, six years, um, maybe even about eight years. But, but most of the people using those tools are in the movie industry or the animation industry, um, or designers that are using a sub-D modeling tool, and then they have, they have to redo that model or remodel that with traditional surfacing tools in something like SOLIDWORKS. Okay, got it. So what we're going to show is a little bit of both of those, right? Yeah, so we're going to talk about a tool today called SOLIDWORKS Industrial Designer uh, that brings all that power and ease of use of a sub-D modeler into a designer or engineer's hands. And this isn't just another sub-D add-in or sub-D modeler. We'll show how integrated it is with traditional desktop SOLIDWORKS. So you can continue your design and add all the mechanical things that you'd want to put in there. Well, great. Well, let's get started, and I think the audience is ready for that. All right. Great. So just a quick overview of the agenda here. We're going to talk about this SOLIDWORKS Industrial Designer tool. Uh, this tool was introduced in late 2015. Um, it is an independent tool from traditional desktop SOLIDWORKS. It could be used by the same user or independent users in the company. And we're going to go through the sketch, shape, share, and refine four areas of the industrial designer and how we think people are going to use that tool. And then, of course, the topic of this presentation is trying to show how much faster this tool is to use and how much easier this would be over traditional surfacing. So we're going to show a couple great modeling examples at the end as well. So. The traditional industrial designer uh, or design process as we see it is, is a lot of times people are doing a 2D concept sketch. This may be on paper or this may even be in some kind of artist package, uh, an Adobe product or something like that, with a hand-drawn sketch of, of, the, of the idea that somebody wants to create. Then maybe somebody's taking that and doing a 3D model but using maybe a sub-D tool or even just a service rendering tool, a Rhino or a Maya or something like that. And then, of course, it has to be built in a traditional CAD package uh, so that you can add all the mechanical features to make things fit together, actually make this with molds, and maybe even package it. And the problem with that process is there's this huge drop-off in between each one of those stages, and you lose this productivity because a lot of times that model has to be remodeled or you can't use the previous model in the next step. So we propose with the Industrial Designer tool uh, these four areas, the sketch, the shape, the share, and the refine. And you can do all four of these inside of SOLIDWORKS Industrial Designer. Um, the refine area really is what, though, what we're talking about is taking it into traditional desktop SOLIDWORKS to do your uh, mechanical things that you would still want to do in there. All right, as far as the sketching area goes, um, we're going to just briefly overview that and not really show anything with that, but inside of the Industrial Designer tool, you can quickly capture multiple design ideas in a very familiar environment. If you're using a traditional artist drawing tool like an Adobe product, uh, fully integrated with Industrial Designer that you can draw these 2D sketches using something like a Wacom tablet uh, with your pen or your stylus and make these 2D sketches. Then you can use these 2D sketches to build your 3D models off of which is really the next area we're going to take a look at, the shape area. And this is the true sub-D modeling portion. So here we see some of the, those 2D sketches already drawn, and we're going to start out with this primitive shape. In this case, we're using a cube, but there's many primitive shapes you can start out with. 
We're also defining the number of cage elements, just like how you would define points in a spline. Then we're just grabbing and selecting certain points in this cage or this shape and using the robot manipulator to pull and push on these sections. Uh, really just like using a, a lump of clay in your hands, pushing and pulling on it. We don't have to maintain this, this curvature and this continuity all around. We can actually take edges and crease them and make hard edges or some degree of a hard edge and then get a, a, a nice division. We can also select a number of points and do something called quick align where we draw with the pen or with the mouse and it just tries to match those points to what we're drawing. So much easier than grabbing five points and pulling them up and three more points and pushing them down. We just draw the shape we want and match those points. We'll do a little more tweaking, come in on the front here and push and pull some of these others just by selecting points, aligning that triad the direction we want to pull, and then grabbing all of the arrows and pulling or rotating as you see here. On the side area, we want to make it an indented shape. So we're going to come in and subdivide this area in here so that we've got a place for your, your, your palm or your thumb to set in. We'll pull some of these out and then we'll grab those inside surfaces and actually push those in. So you notice that we haven't done a single sweep, loft, drawing of a, a sketch curve or anything like that. Now we can go to transparency mode and see those artist renderings or those artist sketches through the model. Make sure we're matching our design. And we'll just re refine this shape a little bit more. So that's really in a quick overview that the sub D area. Like I said, we're going to show some other examples and some other models of this too. So that allows you to create these organic 3D shapes very freely and modify them much faster than you would do using any traditional surfacing techniques. Hey Randy, I noticed you didn't put any dimensions on that. So really you're just modeling against a sketch. Right, yeah, you're going off of a picture, whether it's a sketch that you drew inside of here or a picture that you've imported a JPEG or a TIFF. And really you're just trying to make a shape. And that's the great thing is there's no wrong way to make a shape. Um, as many moves or pulls as it takes, that's what it takes. Uh, you get the end shape that you want at the end, and you're done. Uh, it's not like SOLIDWORKS where you've got more features and the file gets bigger. It's, it doesn't really matter in this environment. Right. At the end of that, you've got that freeform solid. Cool. Um, another area we're not really going to show very much on, but I do want to mention, is the 3D experience platform that's included with the Industrial Designer tool. And this gives you a community where you can share your design ideas grab screenshots and even post real 3D models up to this community, private community, people, users with access, uh, then with a tablet or with a phone even, can get in here and review your, your designs and give feedback on those designs. So that's fully integrated in the industrial design tool and that's also in, integrated into regular desktop SOLIDWORKS and you're going to see more of that coming in 2017. With So in the refine area, we're going to talk about actually interacting with desktop SOLIDWORKS. And this is what everybody wants to know is, okay, what do I do with this model after Industrial Designer? So we're going to export out to a SOLIDWORKS format here. And in traditional desktop SOLIDWORKS, we'll import that in. It's going to come in as an imported shape, but you'll notice there are no problems when we do our geometry check or import diagnostics on that. Here we can also see that all continuity, curvature continuity has been maintained across into SOLIDWORKS. So we've got a nice watertight solid from the industrial designer tool. Then here in desktop SOLIDWORKS is where I would do my shelling, my ribs, adding this battery pack mold shape from my design library, any of those mechanical things that you'd want to do. Here we're doing some offsetting to do a co-molded area, some rubber in this side, uh, exploded views. All the traditional mechanical things you'd want to do in desktop SOLIDWORKS, you're still going to do. Here you see the community even integrated into the SOLIDWORKS uh, package to share this design. So we're not trying to replace desktop SOLIDWORKS with the industrial designer tool in any way. It just complements the tool. It's really offering that sub D modeling that's been out there for a few years and making it part of the design process. Absolutely. Yep. Integrating that in very tightly. So you would still add these 3D, 3D details with SOLIDWORKS. Any edits you want to make to that freeform organic shape, you would go back to Industrial Designer and make, or the Industrial Designer would make those changes, and you just pass that back and forth to SOLIDWORKS again. So would you still need to use any kind of surfacing in SOLIDWORKS to do any detail on your model? Sure, you might need to do something, offsetting of surfaces or adding something extra, but really I would think you would do that in the Industrial Designer tool as much as you can. So just to review, we've got our sketch, uh, sketch tools inside of here, the shaping tools, the sub-D portion that we're really talking about in this, this seminar, 
uh, the ability to share through the community, and then the ability to refine and bring that concept into manufacturing. Using these techniques and this idea, we think that you know going from industrial designer to SolidWorks desktop software is going to save you time and avoid these drop-offs uh, that we talked about with traditional industrial designer tools. You know, I've seen some other sub-D modeling tools out there in the industry, and I, this one has two things that I think are unique. One is the built-in sketching, which I thought was really cool, and also that sharing and collaboration, and also a tight integration with SolidWorks. That's, uh, that seems to be the real number one uh, play here. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is trying to do this in a single environment, or at least getting rid of three tools and maybe replacing it with only two tools. Yeah, we're going to take a look at some more examples here, Todd, and we're going to show how easy it really is to do this. Now, I've sped up the videos in a couple of these, but I'm going to make sure you understand the speed of these. So this video is running at two times speed, just so it's not so boring of seeing all the push and pull in real time. Uh, here we're just taking another freeform shape, this time a revolve, where we actually took a sketch that we drew and make our, our, our uh, shape that we start out with. And then once again, we're just going to be grabbing surfaces and edges and points to push and pull. Here we've got some sketches. We're making this apple slicer uh, that you may have seen uh, at Ikea or somewhere like that, right? Very free, funky freeform shape. We're just going to grab some surfaces and start pulling on this to try to match those shapes. Once again, remember this is at two times speed. This is going to take us about uh, a minute and a half, two minutes to go through this. So three, four minutes to make this design in real time. Here you see we're able to turn that cage on and actually grab those cage elements if we need to. Sometimes it's easier to understand how the shape is flowing and what's going on with that shape if you turn the cage on and pull on pieces of the cage rather than points on the model. We're making that handle area and just trying to match that artist rendering as close as we can. Here we'll come in at the side view, grab some points and do a rotate and a move in the XY plane or in this case the ZX plane to get excuse me, to get that uh, line the way we want. Here's where we're going to do one of those creases again. We need a hard edge in here. Everything's not, not nice and smooth on, on all models. So we're going to do that crease and do a push down here to make a nice hard edge for this indent. And then if we take a look at the side and the back here, we really don't like how this is twisting. We want to pull this area out and scale this a little bit. So we'll grab several faces. We'll come in here to a side view. And we're going to scale these faces at the same time. Uh, we're going to move where the manipulator handle is. You can obviously reposition that and reorient that any time. And then we're going to grab one of the dots instead of one of the arrows and just scale those faces in or out, which is a really neat thing to do to bloat or shrink in the sides of a model. We don't like how this is twisting in the back, so we'll add some more refinement, just like adding points in a spline. You can add more divisions in your cage. And then we're going to tweak and pull that in so that's not twisting around so much. It seems like there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to do that. Yeah, and I mentioned that before. You know, once you are, you're just trying to build a, build a shape, and there's no wrong way to build a shape. Here we got one half looking how we want it, so we're just going to use the symmetry tool to get the other half looking how we want. Kind of like a mirror, um, but also a live symmetry. Any changes now that we would make on one side would translate to the other side. And we're done with this model. Well, that didn't take much time at all. No, and, and it really is that fast. Once you learn 10 minutes worth of how to use that robot manipulator, it, you can make any shapes you want. So in this example, we're going to start out with a sketch that I've drawn with dimensions on it. Notice here this video is at three times speed. We'll set our size in this direction of our freeform starting shape and our number of cage elements. We're going to use a tool here called the extrude face that you haven't seen before just to add some bumps to the top of this. This will eventually be our handle area. In this model, it makes it easier to edit using the cage. Notice as I pull pieces on the cage, it is actually moving the points on the surfaces. It doesn't matter which way you edit the model. Both will provide great results. Here we're adding some taper at the top, subdividing this face so we have some more refinement, and then we're going to tilt these two faces towards each other just using the rotate on the scale. We're going to use the extrude tool here to pick two faces and it'll actually build a bridge for us. Great for making this handle shape. We'll add some more refinement in this area and then we'll use that quick align tool that you saw before to help pull in these top surfaces here. As I draw with the pin or with the mouse it's going to match the shape that I'm drawing. Much, much easier than trying to grab points and pull them up and other points and push them down. Good shape on the top there. 
We'll add some more refinement at the top and bottom. And then we'll subdivide these faces on this side and on the other side at the same time so we can push them in. Now I could do this at the same time as you're seeing here, or I could work on one half and use the symmetry tool to get the same results on the other half as you saw in the apple slicer. Here we just like being able to see both sides at the same time. We'll use the scale handles to bloat out or push in the sides in this case. And then we'll do some more tweaking to this model. It's too square. Let's just grab the top and push it back. Pull this bottom out. Make this much more ergonomic looking. Make this handle area a little bigger. Take the front and push it forward. Make that subdivided indented area match. Refine our handle at the top a little more to add some thickness to it. And in just a couple minutes, we've got this very organic shape. Next, we're going to use just some traditional 2D sketching. I'm going to come in on a side plane here and use a line tool in this case and put a reference plane at the end of that line. On that reference plane, we'll make a circle sketch, which we could, of course, add a dimension to. And then we're going to use that circle to just do a traditional extrude. So we do have traditional modeling tools in the Industrial Designer tool as well, extrudes and cuts, revolves, even sweeps and lofts, and some surfacing tools. We'll merge these two shapes together, and we'll add a fillet in between to blend, them, blend the shapes. Then, of course, tweaking that sketch and adjusting that sketch will adjust the orientation of that nozzle on the bottle. Now, those shapes, that extrude and those shapes could have been done in the traditional desktop solid works, but why wouldn't you do them here in the industrial designer? Because they are part of that bottle. So, at just under three and a half minutes, at three times speed, we were able to build this bottle. So, in real life, if you could do this in under 10 minutes, wouldn't that be a great time savings compared to doing this in traditional surfacing where you'd have hundreds of surfaces and patches on the sides of this thing? Much, much faster. As a wrap-up to what you've seen today with the SOLIDWORKS Industrial Designer, we give you all the tools to quickly capture your ideas with 2D sketching using traditional Wacom tablets or pen tablets of any kind and capture those 2D sketches. We, of course, also give you the Sub-D freeform modeling to do organic shapes in 3D and make a nice watertight solid. The 3D communities that allow you to share your data. And then the refinement tools that allow you to take that data from SOLIDWORKS Industrial Designer into traditional desktop SOLIDWORKS and bring your concept to manufacturing. SOLIDWORKS Industrial Designer is not trying to replace traditional SOLIDWORKS. It's just there to complement it. Thanks for attending. Be sure to visit our website and attend one of our SOLIDWORKS 2017 launch events in a city near you. And join our October Tech Talk, when, why, and how to upgrade SOLIDWORKS. Thank you for attending.